Welcome, and thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy this video, we invite those of you who haven't yet done so, to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the notification icon, to be notified when the next one is uploaded. We enjoy reading all comments, whether positive or negative, because it is very important to ventilate both sides of any issue, all we ask is that you observe the YouTube community guidelines. Today we will be providing our review of the Belgian Grand Prix which we had expected would be a watershed moment in the driver's title race, and by Jove it has lived up to expectations. We had forewarned that once Sir Lewis gets going, he is impossible to stop, and true to form, the momentum that had been building up over the last four races, carried on into the Belgian GP, with him sweeping all aside, but for the sabotage by his team. He overcame the initial efforts by Mercedes to sabotage him and qualified ahead of George Russell. By so doing, he essentially trumped any plan to use pit strategy to put George back ahead, or so he was right to have thought. The fact that Sir Lewis waited until Q2 to go faster than his teammate all weekend, and extend the gap in Q3, sends the strongest message ever, to Mercedes and George. Starting from third on the grid and with his comments post-qualifying, about being sure that the cars ahead of him were on fresher tires, we were expecting something special from him, and he delivered. He quickly went from third to first, within two laps, while our main concern alongside him on the grid, Lando Norris, quickly dropped from fourth to seventh, enhancing his reputation for poor starts when placed under pressure. Once we were denied the opportunity to see Max and his bezzy mate duking it out on the start grid, because of Max's grid penalty, we were concerned that Lando would overcompensate for his starting deficiency and Lewis Hamilton derangement syndrome, by taking Sir Lewis out in a display of over-aggressive and reckless driving at the start. Thankfully that didn't happen as Lando promptly went backwards at the start never to recover again. It is notable that Max again left this race, extending his lead over his so-called championship rival, Lando. Even though he started seven places ahead of Max, in a car that in the hands of his teammate was able to contest for the win, lapdog Lando and his compromised team conveniently adopted a pit-stop strategy that meant Max did not need to overtake him on the tracks. Once Sir Lewis took the lead on lap three, we were pretty confident that barring a Mercedes sabotage, he would win. Sir Lewis's comments at the end of the race revealed how Mercedes managed to sabotage his race in favor of George. He stated that at every stint he had tires left, but the team called him in. So, the team had knowledge that the tires were not degrading as badly as had been anticipated, and used that information for the benefit of George and to the disadvantage of Sir Lewis. Now, it was fully expected that as the race entered its closing stages, Mercedes' team strategy should have been asking the slower George on older tires, to let the faster Sir Lewis on fresher tires through, but I guess hell would freeze over before Toto would do that. On the surface, the call was leaving them free to race, but in reality Sir Lewis had been lured into giving the edge to George, because Mercedes knew that their tires were not degrading as badly as had been anticipated. So, George was able to switch to a one-stop strategy while Sir Lewis was kept to a two-stopper, and denied the knowledge that the tires were not degrading as badly as anticipated. Therefore, Mercedes once again used team strategy to sabotage Sir Lewis, in favor of George. If Mercedes had not misled Sir Lewis into thinking that he had enough over his teammate during the race, or about the true performance of the tires, he would probably have made different decisions as the race was unfolding. He would possibly have gone a bit faster, to take more life out of his tires, so that he would have arrived behind George a lot sooner, and had more laps to overtake him at the end. The most telling consciousness of guilt on the part of Mercedes, was Toto coming on the radio to attribute the call to go long to George. If there was no need to spin a covering narrative, Toto would have had no reason to make those comments. But it is what it is. At least now, 
Sir Lewis knows not to take any chances with the information coming from his team in respect of his teammates' competitiveness during the race. In much the same way as he learnt the lessons of ensuring that someone is tasked with looking after his tyre's health in the garage. The race finished at 15.26, and in under 15 minutes, Mercedes were headlining their homepage with a picture of George Russell's car. So how were they able to effect the change so quickly if they were not aware that Sir Lewis had been misled into giving George the victory? As our regular viewers will be aware, we monitor the Mercedes homepage to record their anti Lewis bias, and lo and behold, immediately after free practice 3, and before qualifying, they were quick to headline their homepage with an image of George and his car. Now think about that for a minute. Of course, once Sir Lewis pipped him in qualifying, they had no choice but to replace that image with one of car 44 and its driver. And again, our regular visitors may recall how slow Mercedes were in updating their homepage after Sir Lewis's epic victory at Silverstone. They headlined their homepage with an image of George's victory from the previous week in Austria, up until the morning after Sir Lewis's epic victory. It appears that Mercedes are now much quicker in updating their homepage. If anyone has any ideas why that is, please let us know in the comments section. BBC for their part continued their anti Lewis bias by trying to suggest to the stewards that he might be due a sanction for an unsafe release during his first pit stop. Good one British Broadcasting Corporation. To put things into perspective, while the BBC were trying to induce the stewards into penalising the race leader, they were trying to telepathically encourage the nearly man by suggesting that he had a car capable of winning the race and could do so if he kept his head and adopted a good tyre strategy. Of course, the BBC have nothing but goodwill and excuses to offer on behalf of the Dutch driver that they would like to give the title of the greatest instead of the Brit. Wonder why? To make matters worse, or make the BBC's intentions clearer, our good friend Andrew Benson pitched in mid-race, with his comment that the race winner is likely to be between Lewis, Charles, and Oscar. The only problem with that is of course, they are aware and have acknowledged that Sir Lewis is controlling the race from the front, so he would have to suffer a problem of some description. Guess it's nice to know where their hearts lie and they have inadvertently testified that had it not been for Mercedes' sabotage, Sir Lewis would have won a race that he was controlling from the start. Because if his team had kept him fully informed, he would have acted accordingly. We were very pleased to see the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc on pole and hope Ferrari will continue on their upward trajectory. We were not surprised to see Max Verstappen suffering a grid penalty to take on a juiced-up power unit, given his performance over the course of the last few races. Once the rest of the pack started catching up to him, there was no option left but to give him a juiced-up power unit. Perhaps someone can explain in the comments section, where Perez suddenly got the push from to make it to the top of the starting grid, coincidentally at the same time his teammate was forced to drop down the grid. So, our takeaway from this weekend is congratulations to Sir Lewis for continuing his resurgence, and now he has uncovered another of Mercedes's sabotage tricks and will be better placed to deal with it going forward. He clearly has the advantage in race pace and his team have run out of sabotage tricks. And the gods have stepped in to fight for him as George got disqualified and Toto ended up with egg on his face yet again. Perhaps if Mercedes had not been so focused on cheating Sir Lewis, they would have paid better attention to the weight of George's car, or maybe they have been getting away with giving George a lighter car.